Hey leader, David Burke is here, organizational psychologist and author of four best-selling books on helping teams do their best work ever. And in this video, we're gonna talk about something a little tricky. We're gonna talk about how to keep your team motivated, what you can do at any level of the organization to keep your team inspired and motivated. One of the cornerstones of any great team is how well that team is motivated and inspired to do the work both collaboratively and individually to get the job done. And as a leader, there's a lot you can do to make sure that that team stays motivated and inspired. Now, if you're a leader inside a larger organization, it might seem like you don't have a lot of power. You can't change the incentive compensation system or the annual performance review or, or something like that. And if you're a small business owner or you are have a lot of power in your organization, you might be able to change a few of those things. But there are a few key levers that leaders at any level can use to help their team get more inspired to do the work they're tasked with doing every single day and even help them expand their job into one that is more purposeful, more motivating, and more engaging. And this will have a spillover effect in keeping the whole team motivated. It might even make you a little more motivated to lead that team. Let's look at three specific things leaders at all levels can do to inspire their people and their team. Now the first element is autonomy, giving employees and the whole team some autonomy in how they do the job. You might not be able to change what they're called upon to do every single day, but you can give a lot more freedom than you think in terms of how to do the job. And we've known about the motivating power of autonomy for a long time. Decades ago, Richard Ryan and Edward Deasy compiled a bunch of different studies into what they called self-determination theory, uh, the basis of which is the idea that people are more motivated to do work when they can determine for themselves what work they're going to do. Uh, but the professional world, the organizational world, largely ignored self-determination theory for a long time. It wasn't until Daniel Pink published the book Drive that brought self-determination theory into the mainstream and popularized the idea that autonomy was a huge motivating factor. Now, what does autonomy mean? Autonomy quite simply means that you're giving your people some say over how they do their work, when they do the work, who they need to partner with, whatever it is. The given dynamics of the team and the individual task will determine it. But you know, a lot of performance review literature and a lot of micromanagers still act as if it's their job to watch how people are doing the work. That's a holdover from Frederick Taylor and scientific management, and we don't need to get into all of that in this video. Remember that the job of a manager, the job of a solid leader, is to collaboratively determine the objectives for the individual and the team. What do we need to accomplish? And then to let the team determine how, or to let the individual determine how. When you have a say over how you do the work, what order you do it in, who you need to do it with, when you have autonomy, you are much more motivated to do the work because you can do it in a way that naturally matches your rhythms of work and naturally matches your own strengths, abilities, desires, etc. Autonomy is a powerful cornerstone of making your team and individuals on your team much more motivated. And as the manager, it turns out that you have a lot more autonomy to give them than you probably think. It just takes a little bit of trust. And we've done videos on how to build trust as a team as well. We'll link those wherever we can link uh, videos on how to build trust. But if you begin to trust your people, you'll be able to give them more autonomy or better give them autonomy first and let them see how much you trust them. Now the second pillar in motivating individuals and teams much more often kind of goes hand in hand with the autonomy piece and that is to provide feedback. Now that's feedback not only on how they're doing the task but feedback on where they are in the, the process. Are they making progress on the task? It turns out from a wealth of research, mostly from Teresa Immobile, that progress in the job has a massive motivating effect on whether or not people stay engaged in the task at hand, the overall job, or even on the team. And as a leader, it's your job to demonstrate that progress. It's one of the most potent human motivators. And the thing that's amazing about feedback and about demonstrating progress is that it's largely free. It's pretty free to move from an annual performance appraisal to checking in on your people every couple of weeks. It's pretty free to open the lines of communication so that you can provide feedback on a job as they're doing it because you gave them the autonomy to do it, remember, and now you're gonna help them figure out that how, but you're not gonna command them. Or to provide feedback or updates on where we are as a team, where we are in the larger process, or even just echo feedback on where the organization is as a whole. Progress is a powerful human motivator and it comes through the feedback that you as the leader are going to give your team and the individuals on it. 
Now, the third and final element of a highly motivated team or highly motivated individuals is purpose. And I have talked a lot about purpose, both in these videos and in my writings, because I believe at core that people don't want to join a company if they ever did, but they certainly don't want to anymore. They want to join a crusade. They want to join a cause. They want to know what that bigger thing in the world that they are fighting for by taking this job is. And as a, as a leader, as a manager, even if you're a middle manager, it's your job to demonstrate that purpose. Now, one of my favorite examples of purpose at work and the motivating power it has is an initiative run at KPMG to help motivate a lot of the accountants that served on, this is one of the big four accounting firms on the planet. And they launched a campaign called the We Shape History campaign. And, and uh, alongside of that was the 10,000 Stories Challenge. Now, the goal of the We Shape History campaign was to demonstrate purpose in something that would seem bland. I mean, it's auditing. It's not all that motivating. It, it can be an engaging task if you really love numbers. But if not, it's hard to see that larger purpose. But it turned out that KPMG's auditing prowess had been used at multiple times throughout pivotal moments in human history. Everything from the Lend-Lease Act during World War II to the certification of the election results of Nelson Mandela. And KPMG, again, this is a bland big four consulting firm, buttoned up, suited up, corporate culture, you wouldn't really think is that uh, on a crusade type of culture. And yet they could demonstrate how their work helped shape history. They then took it a step further with the 10,000 stories challenge. And the 10,000 Stories Challenge was about asking individual auditors, what purpose, what cause do you serve by doing your work? We want to hear how you shape history. And they thought they were going to get 10,000 stories on, you know, if the initiative was a success, they got tens of thousands of stories of how individual KPMGers felt like they shaped history. And in looking at all the different results and the effect that it had on engagement, one thing, and this is what I want to draw your attention to, one thing was universally clear. And that is the extent to which the individual team leader was willing to second this project, was willing to have conversations regularly about the purpose of the team and the work that the team was doing. That had a massive effect on whether or not the 10,000 Stories Challenge or the larger We Shape History program had a motivating effect on your people. Now, if your company uh, seems like, oh, we don't have a big purpose, we just make widgets or whatever, this is why I cited this example. It's KPMG. It's auditing. It's boring. And yet even that can be cause worthy. Purpose is a powerful human motivator. If you can demonstrate as the leader early and often the fight, the cause, the crusade that your people are in. And if you can do that combined with giving your people autonomy and combined with giving your people feedback as they make progress on that purpose, you will have a powerful, let's call it a trifecta, right? A powerful trinity of motivating factors that'll go to work on your team. And as I said at the top of the video, you can do this at every level of the organization. No matter how large or small the team that you are in charge of leads. If you don't have the power to change the incentive compensation plan or overhaul the performance review system, that's fine. Every leader at every level can think about how much autonomy their team has and find ways to give them more. Every leader at every level can think about how much feedback they're providing their individual members and the team, can think about how much progress they're showing as the leader to their team and can crank that up a little bit more. And no matter how purpose-driven or purpose-lacking your organization feels like, every leader at every level can find some cause. If KPMG can find tens of thousands of stories, you can find one story, one motivating factor, one fight that your people are in, and you can rally them not just to be more motivated, but to win. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video all the way to the end. If you liked it, make sure you're subscribed to the channel because we post content like this on a regular basis. And if you really liked it and you want to go deeper, then check out our totally free course, Three Days to a More Motivated and Aligned Team. It's a totally free video course and you can get it at davidberkuscom slash three days. We'll see you there.